Coming to the problem number three, where a full journal bearing of 50 diameter, length 100, bearing pressure 1.4 Newton per millimeter square, speed of the journal 900, radio, ratio of the journal diameter to the diametral clearance, diameter clearance is 1000, bearing is lubricated with the oil whose absolute viscosity Z. At operating temperature 75 degrees 0.011 kilo kg per meter per second the room temperature is 35 degrees so we need to calculate artificial cooling required what is the amount mass of the lubricating oil required if the difference between the outlet and the inlet temperature of the oil is 10 degree take the specific heat uh, nothing but cp is 1850 joule per kg per degree celsius so this is the data they are given so if you substitute all the datas i mean to say note down all these values as shown in the slide so amount of artificial cooling that is the first thing that we need to calculate for that equation is hg minus hd hg is the heat generated hd is the heat dissipated heat generated can be calculated by using the equation 15.6 j that is nothing but hg is equal to f into w into v v we can calculate by d and by thousand uh, and w is equal to load nothing but uh, pressure into d into l that also we can calculate only unknown is the coefficient of friction that we can calculate from the mckee's equation f is equal to k a z n by p r by c into 10 to the power minus 10 into delta the power delta f uh, which is 15.4 p equation in the data so here delta f is 0 0.002 because we are our uh, l by d ratio is 100 by 50 that is nothing but 2 for l by d ratio range delta f value is 0 0.002 so which is uh, which you can get it in the data handbook also so now we get ka is equal to 0 0.195 into 10 to the power 6 for full journal bearing or nothing but beta 360 degrees so from the data handbook all these values are available in the data handbook so just substitute these values so we get coefficient of friction f is equal to 4.298 into 10 to the power minus 3 so therefore we can calculate the heat generated using the equation which comes out to be 70.88 joule per second or watts coming to the heat dissipated that is required for the amount of cooling required so you have equation for the heat dissipated kpl d into 10 to the power minus 6 15.8 11 c is the equation in the data handbook so if you can substitute kp is equal to tb minus ta plus 18 to the power 2 divided by k3 which again available in the data handbook uh, tb minus ta which is nothing but half into t naught operating temperature minus the room temperature a so for the operating temperature 75 and room temperature 35 degrees celsius and K3 is 0.484 which is also available in the data handbook so directly substitute all these values so we come out to be we we get KP value of the equation 2.83.47 or heat dissipated finally after substituting all the values we get 14.91 joule per second so now we'll come to the amount of artificial cooling required nothing but HG minus HD uh, which is nothing but 15.55.97 joule per second as shown in the slide so that 
um, so one more thing is left that is a mass of the lubricating oil required so we know the heat generated equation uh, this we need to remember m into specific heat into uh, delta t so we know the cp value hg value delta t value so that you can calculate mass m of the lubricating oil required which is 3.83 into 10 to the minus 3 kg per second that completes the problem coming to the problem number four for 360 degree hydrodynamic journal bearing radial load is 3.2 that is uh, w journal speed n 1500 radial clearance r sorry c is 0 0.05 millimeter journal diameter d which is equal to bearing length is 50 millimeter l is equal to d viscosity of the lubricant is 25 centipoise assume total heat generated in the bearing is carried away by total oil flow in the bearing that is one assumptions we have to make in the problem assume rho 0.86 and cp is equal to kilo joule per kg per degree celsius so we need to calculate the coefficient of friction second one is the minimum film thickness third is a flow requirement fourth is the temperature rise so this problem requires uh, most of the data that has to be taken from the uh, graph so we need to be very cautious while taking the values from the graph so that has given we need to calculate the sum of it number for this calculations so s yes, value is given from 15.6 e equations so so if you substitute all these values sum of l number s yes, comes out to be 7.32 that is the value we get which is required in the next calculation so coming to the calculation of coefficient of friction that is the first thing that we need to calculate for that we need to go for the figure 15.7 graph in the design data handbook so along the x-axis if you see 7.32 second per minute so if and for 360 degree uh, bearing so if you see that uh, this corresponds to oh, f into r by c along the y-axis that is nothing but coefficient of friction variable which comes out to be 2.6 so so for a x axis s value uh, 7.32 and beta 360 degree we get uh, y corresponding y value equal to 2.6 so this is the value we get so if you see along the y axis y axis you can see you have coefficient of friction variable nothing but r by c into f so f into r by c is nothing but 2.6 that we get so if you calculate f substituting all the known values you it comes out to be 0 0.0052 so similarly for the minimum film thickness that we need to calculate um, along the x axis s value 7.32 beta 360 degree we get h naught by c along the y axis equal to 0 0.85 so so h naught is nothing but your minimum film thickness so h naught is equal to 0 0.85 into 0 0.05 so that we can get it using the given values so minimum film thickness is 0 0.0425 millimeters similarly we can calculate the flow requirement um, like uh, yes along the x-axis and b for beta 360 degrees we get uh, flow variable q by rcnl along the y-axis as 3.05 so for this value we get q is equal to or nothing but flow requirement is equal to 4.766 into 
10 to the power minus 6 meter cube per second. So in a similar way, we can calculate temperature rise, which is given in the data that the heat generated in the bearing is carried away by the total oil flow. So if you can calculate the heat generated from the given equation, H is equal to M into Cp into delta T. So substituting all the variables of the Hg and the uh, right, left and right part. So we get uh, delta T nothing but temperature rise 7.97 degree Celsius.